We was on the bottom, yeah. Now we headed to the top. New level. On my level, don't see anybody. I don't see him. This right here could never stop. This could never stop. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up. Nah, nah. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up. Nah, nah. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up. Nah, nah. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up. Nah, nah. One time, one time. Hey. I live on a job, right? Yeah, I'm always at work, right? Real people stay by me, right? Haters wanna do hurt, right? No, they tryna stop me, right? Drag my name through dirt, right? I don't feed into the hate, right? I just answer with a smirk, facts. I feel so. So now, y'all know you're about to hear from me, y'all know it'll be the Israel, right? So let me ask you a question. Hey, turn the speakers towards me. What? Our people, our brothers in our community, are they standing up like men? Are we being men? What do you think about it? You think we're, we're being real men today? Not right now, right? What's some attributes of being a man? Because now we know we Israel. God requires for his men to be men, right? That's right. So what's the attributes of a man? What does it take to be a man according to God? Bring it out! You want you a hundred percent correct, right? Now you can't go wrong with the commandments. Now let's read it out of the Bible. Read it. First Kings chapter two and verse two. Bring it out! I go all the I go the way of all the earth. This is King David speaking to his son Solomon, right? He's saying Solomon, I go the way of all the earth because every creature on earth needs they end someday, right? He's saying I'm getting ready to get out of here, son. So now he's gonna give his son words on his deathbed to help him in his life when he's gone, right? His dying words. Let's see what his dying words to his son were. Read. Be thou strong, therefore. He said, son, be strong. Right? Because to be a man, a quality of being a man is to be strong, right? Not just physically strong, but mentally strong. Right? Because our men today do not. So he's saying, son, I'm going, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Be strong, my son. Read. And show thyself a man. And he says, son, I need you to be a man when I'm gone. For me to rest easily, I need to know that my son is going to be a man. Be strong. Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. He says, son, keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Read. To walk in his way. He said, walk in all the ways of the Lord, son. That's the way you be strong. Read. To keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses. He says, son, listen, to be strong, to show yourself a man, you must be keeping my commandments. Son. You must be keeping my commandments, son. These are my dying words to you. Keep the commandments and show yourself to be a man. Right. Like my brother said today, we're not doing this. Right. Because would a real man be a liar? Right? That's, that's a sign of weakness. That's not strength. God said, keep my commandments and show yourself strong, meaning I won't be a liar. I won't deal falsely with somebody if I'm being strong, right? I'll stand on my own two feet as a man. That's what he's saying. That's what it means to be a man. And we don't we don't all have those qualities today. We're not standing up strong. We're not we're not uh following the law. We're not uh not lying. We don't have the integrity to keep the Sabbath. Y'all know about the Sabbath? Give it to me. Exodus 20. That's a part about being a man. That's right. To be a man means to have discipline. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? But we don't have that. We don't have that. We don't show those those qualities of strength that it means to be a man. Now let's get one of those qualities, one of those laws, all right? So now y'all gonna learn about the Sabbath. What is the day that we're supposed to worship the most high God? As men, we're talking about being men, right? We men up here, all of us. Saturday. Do our people do that? They do it on Sunday, right? All right, let's read it out of the Holy Bible. Read. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Bring it up. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now he's saying, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why would somebody have to tell you to remember something? Because you might what? You might forget. Right. Now, y'all brothers may have known that, but does the majority of the people that you see on the sign, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, do they know? Do they remember the Sabbath? No, they don't remember. They think it's Sunday. They think it's Sunday. All praises to the Most High, y'all know. So do you keep the Sabbath? You don't, but you... You don't go to church. So, but do you keep the Sabbath? How do you keep the Sabbath?
Not buying and selling? Okay, that's good. No cooking for all price. So you know, do you keep those? You don't cook? Do you buy things on the side? Be honest. You know, do with your brothers now. The reason why we ask you these questions, you do, right? And remember what, remember what King David said to his son. He said, show yourself a man, son, and keep the commandments. Meaning, keep the Sabbath. You understand what I'm saying? So now, if you want to be a man, you're a young man. How old are you? You're 23. You're a young man coming up, right? Now, the way that you show yourself a man to the Most High, according to his laws, you got to keep his commandments. You got to have the integrity and a fortitude to say, you know what? I'm not going to buy on the Sabbath because I'm going to do what God said is required of me as a man. Right. You see what I'm saying? So you got to work on those things. What about you, bro? You keep the Sabbath? Not really, not really. Okay, so we're going to get... Listen, listen. The reason why... I, I understand, I understand. There's brothers up here, right? You think that none of us don't have kids? We got kids, bro. We got wives. We... Got you. But God, but God said to show yourself a man, you gotta do what? You gotta keep the Sabbath, bro. That's right. These men up here got kids. Right. And they keep the Sabbath faithfully. I know because I'm with them on the Sabbath. That's right. They don't use the kids as an excuse. A man will not use excuses. A young a boy would, but as a man, we're gonna keep the law, thus saith the Lord. Right? That's right. We're gonna have integrity as men, right? Alright, read on. Let's see if we're gonna get some more on the Sabbath. Read. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Just like my brother Michael said, you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath, right? That's so right. In it, even if you have kids, as a man, you got to figure out a way to keep the Sabbath, regardless of the children. Because are you going to let your ki children, as a man, keep you out of the kingdom of heaven? No. No. As a man, you're going to stand up and say, I'm going to keep God's law. You understand? Read it. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So nobody that's under you, your children, your cattle, if you gotta, if you have a business, your business gotta shut down on the That's right. You understand? That's how serious God keeps his Sabbath. Because what was the judgment for brothers and sisters that didn't keep the Sabbath in the old Testament? He said he been here now. What was the judgment? You got put to death. It was a, it was that serious that the most I said, if somebody is walking outside of the Sabbath, kill him. What happened to the man who was picking up sticks on the Sabbath? Bring it up. Let's get some more on the Sabbath. Give me, give me the statue. Give me uh, Exodus 16 and 23. You hit it on the head, Michael. You hit it on the head. You understand the statues. But now you got to take it a step further. As becoming a man, you're a young man. As maturing, now you got to say, you know what? I'm going to stand up for the most high. I'm going to keep his commandments because I don't want this to keep happening to my people. Right. That's right. I don't want to contribute to the oppression of my people by breaking God's commandments. That's what a man would say in his mind. Right. A man don't think about himself. What does he think about? His family first, and then what else? His people. Bro. That's right. His people. Right. His people. And that's what the Most High is raising up, men, right. to do that work, to think about their people, to understand that hey, you know what? I gotta keep God's law because I don't, I, I don't like the things happening to my people. Bring it out. Read. Exodus chapter sixteen and verse twenty-three. Bring it out. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. So this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel in the wilderness. He's saying tomorrow, y'all, is the Sabbath. Right? Let's see what he told them to do the day before the Sabbath. Read. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye, shall, which ye will bake today. So just to help you guys understand, the Sabbath is from Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown. Right? He said, tomorrow is the Sabbath. Bake what you need to bake today. You can't cook on the Sabbath, right? He said, bake it today, right? Read. Bake that which you will bake today, and see that you will see. He said, see what you will see. What, is, what does it mean to see? Let's see. Almost. See, if I said I'm going to pour you in a pot of seething hot water, what's that? I'm going to boil something. Boil. 
boil. So he's saying bake what you gonna bake, like meaning cook in the oven, or boil whatever you gotta put boil today. I'm saying do it today, the day before the seven. Read. And that which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. He said, what remaineth lay up, layeth up for you in the morning? What do we call that today? If you cook a pot, leftovers. Leftovers, bro. Hey, everybody on the sign know about leftovers, bro. We got leftovers in the fridge probably right now, I'm pretty sure. And we don't have a problem with having leftovers any other day of the week. But our people always find an excuse to cook on the Sabbath. God said, use those leftovers the next day. Right. Have some cereal. As a man, you gonna understand the importance of the commandments and you gonna make a way. That's right. You gonna make you a cold cut sandwich. I do it. Right. Cereal. Or right. fast. One day ain't gonna kill you. You understand what I'm saying? Now let's get the last, let's get another statue. Give me on me and my ten and thirty-one. So now we understand we can't buy with you, excuse me. We can't work and we can't cook, like you said. You understand? And you, you it's a good thing you understand that, but you gotta apply it. Alright? Now let's get the last statue. Yeah, we're gonna move on. We're gonna Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day, he said, if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals, where today is what? What's, what's where? What you got on your bodies right now? Clothes. Y'all wear y'all clothes, right? He's saying if y'all if they bring any clothes, things to sell, or any victuals, meaning food or any trinkets to sell on the Sabbath day, let's see what the forefather said that we would do. Read. If any uh and if the people of the land bring any wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. See what our forefathers who stood up like men said? What they said they, we, they was gonna do with those wearing rituals on the Sabbath. They would not what? They wouldn't buy it. Because they understood to show themselves a man like Paul, um, like uh, King King David said to Solomon that they have to stand on those laws. They said if they bring we ain't gonna buy it. These brothers up here, Walgreens is open on the Sabbath. They not buying anywhere in the victory from the We not. We keeping our money in our pocket on that day. That's right. You understand? That's a part of having integrity. That's one thing that we lack in our community. We don't want to stand for anything. We want everything to be easy. That's why when David was dying, he said, son, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong. Because sometimes it's going to take perseverance for you to keep the small commandments like that. That's why you need strength. You need strength to say, you know what? Regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of the kids, regardless of my baby mama, regardless of my situation, right. I'm going to do these laws. I'm going right. to keep it. Bring it out. Bring it out. So now I want to talk to you, bro. You said that you have children, right? And sometimes that's what's in the room. What's, what's the situation with you and the children? Bro? Are you guys married? Okay. It's legal? Okay. What, what's the... Okay, you've been together for 11 years. So what, if you don't mind me asking, what legal issue? You said, say again? Child support? Child, so you you afraid of the child support issue? Child okay, right. Understood, 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 understood. I got you. Okay, now, remember, I understand, you want to, you want to, I understand. But remember what we read. To show yourself a man, right? What does God say you have to do with that system? Gotcha. Understood, understood. It's not, it's not legally shit. Gotcha, gotcha. So let's, let's see if, if it's okay with God to just say we, cause I'm assuming that what you're saying is, y'all pretty much married, you don't cheat on her, she don't cheat on y'all, y'all exclusive, but you don't have the paperwork. But I'm gonna tell you right now, bro, that's just your baby moms. That's just your. That's just your. That's just your girl. According to God. According to God, you gotta do things decently in order. That's right. Let me tell you, chapter seven. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he did. He probably failed. Right. Common law marriage. Understood. Understood. I got you. I got you. But but you want you want to make sure. And I'm going to explain to you why. Because I understand where you're coming from, bro. I understand. But I'm just trying to explain to you that according to God, that's just your girlfriend. But you got to do the thing that's honorable, the thing that's manly-like, and marry the sister. That's right. Give me Toby chapter 7 and verse 13. Start, start at verse 
Start of verse 12. The book of Tobit in the Apocrypha, chapter 7 and verse 12. Where God said, then take her from henceforth according to the manner, for thou art her cousin, and she is thine. Verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah and said she come to her father. And he took he took her by the hand and gave her to be to be wife to Tobias. So now we're talking about a marriage. This is somebody giving they, they children in marriage, right? So you say he took her by the hand to give them to be wife. Let's see what happens. Read. Saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses. So what we've been talking about all day has been a common theme. The laws of God, right? That's what we're talking about. He said, right. take her after the law of Moses. Right? Now, under the law of Moses, could we just say, hey, you know what? This is my lady. This is my wife. What we had to have. Okay. But we're going to show you. Read. Take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them. And he called Anna his wife and took paper. You said that they took paper. This is the law they're talking about. They took paper and did what? And did write an instrument of covenants. An instrument of covenants. What's a covenant? What's an easy word for covenant? You're a smart young brother. Covenant. How about, what, what does a covenant mean? What is that? It's an agreement between two people, right? What's an easy word for that today? A contract. That's right. A license. A marriage license. That's what we read about in the Holy Bible. That's right. Okay, said this is after the law of Moses. A lot of times people will say, oh, and, and we didn't do that. That's not our culture to have marriage documents. Why am I reading it in the Bible? Why men of understanding say that that's the way they got to do it? Bring it out. You're going to be living in sin, brother. Understand. Try to do it expediently, man. Try to do it quickly so you can do the right thing according to the Most High. So you could be living like the man that we're reading about in the scriptures. Living like the man. Because the, the, the people that truly want to keep God's laws, the real men that's going to stand up for the Most High, they're going to follow those laws, man. That's right. No excuse. Zero excuse. Because we don't have space for that. Because look at the condition of our community, bro. We don't got time for excuses. Our people need us now. They need us now. They need us yesterday, bro. And it's going to take men. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to take men to have that drive to say, to hell with everything else. The scriptures say uh, uh, a soldier don't entangle himself with the things of this world. Right. Meaning you don't care what's going on. That's right. You're going to keep God's laws. That's right. You're going to do that thing. Bring it out. Give me two minutes with him. And Anna, his wife, and took paper and did write an instrument of covenants. So we reading, we reading about a marriage certificate right now. Read. And sealed it. Okay, so they sealed it, meaning it was it was legally stamped, just like we do now. In this wicked society, they we still have instruments to keep the righteous acts of the Bible. That's right. That's why. That's why uh, we was reading this. You gotta be strong. You gotta show yourself a man, because God, even in these last days, is giving us an opportunity to keep His laws. That's right. Giving us an opportunity to come back to Him. Give me First Corinthians chapter six and verse nine. Give me First Corinthians chapter six and verse nine. Because it's, our people think that this thing is going to be an easy walk in the park, right? They think that anybody could get into the kingdom. What's the requirements to get into the kingdom? You got to follow the law. Right? That's right. So anybody that's not following the laws, they ain't going to make it. Okay. Read. The book of First Corinthians, chapter chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? So Michael, it say the unrighteous not going to inherit the kingdom of God. No way possible. Read. Be not deceived. He's saying, don't be deceived. Because I'm pretty sure if you go across the street to this uh, Pentecostal tabernacle, they can tell you, oh, as long as you washed in the blood of Jesus and you confess with your mouth, that you won't be, no. He said, don't be deceived. That's right. There's people out there that's trying to deceive you, bro. But the men that we're reading about in the Bible, the men that the Most High is raising up, they won't be deceived. Right. They don't know without a shadow of a doubt. You've got to keep these laws. They don't know. Read. Neither fornicators. Fornicators. What's a fornicator, Mike? Right. Good. Good. Read. Just uh, even people that may quote unquote be 
in a committed relationship, if they don't have the legal documentation, then the risk of fornication. That's why it's all important. You know what I'm saying? Read. Nor idolaters. Idolaters. I Meaning people that say, oh, you know, I agree with what y'all saying. The Israelites, that Israelite stuff is cool. You know, but I'm a, I'm a Muslim. He's saying, no people, don't be deceived. They're not making it. The people that's following Farrakhan and all that type of uh, Islam garbage, God said, don't be deceived. Bring it out. Don't be deceived. Right. Don't think it's a uh, it's an open party. God just gonna be like ah whatever. I understood. No, He said don't be deceived. They not making it. People that worship Buddhism and all this type of thing. Rastafarianists. No, you gotta worship the Most High God like the way He said by following His laws. That's right. Read. Nor adulterers, nor effeminate. 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 He said nor effeminate is gonna make it into the kingdom. What's the effeminate? No, they, they, they don't necessarily got to be gay. I, I tell you, I put it to you like this: on the cover of GQ magazine a couple couple months back, you know who Pharrell is? You, you like Pharrell's music? You don't like him? Okay, cool. He, he right, right, skateboards and stuff like that. He got blonde hair, right? Pharrell was on the cover of GQ magazine wearing a dress. That's considered you feminist, right? Because who was wear dresses? Females, right? Let me show you another way you could be feminine. You could you could like sisters, you understand what I'm saying? But if you're wearing a dress, wearing a kilt, skirts, if you're wearing tight pants, things like that, that's considered effeminate. God said, be not deceived. Effeminate's not gonna make it into the kingdom of heaven. They don't gotta necessarily be gay. But if you if you acting like a female, you got feminine tendencies, if you're soft and delicate, not a strong man like we read in the Bible, you ain't making the kingdom, bro. Right. You see how serious it is? The most high not playing games. He raising up men in these last days. Not soft-spoken, quiet church boy. No, that's not happening. Pharrell and his GQ new masculinity campaign not making the kingdom, bro. Right. right. You gotta be a man according to this Bible. Right. Read. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's now we get into the next step. Abusers of themselves is like you said, a person that's dealing with a man that's sleeping with another man. They ain't gonna make it. LGBT, they say be not deceived. These people that we reading about, God say they not making the kingdom. Right. They won't make it. The soft effeminates and the, the abusers, the actual abusers themselves, not making the kingdom of heaven. Read. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor drunkards. I Meaning people that get drunk in the middle of the day, we, we see a lot of that. He's saying these people ain't gonna make it. Because they don't have that integrity to stand on my love. The people that make it into the kingdom is gonna be a different breed of men. You understand? It's not just going to be open to everybody. Jesus Christ ain't coming back with hugs and kisses and, and twits and, and lovey-dovey on uh, Valentine's Day. That's a fairy tale, bro. The people that's acting like that, he said, they're not making it. Point blank, period. Read. Nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. None of them ain't inheriting the kingdom. None of them. Only the people that stand on these laws, the people that got the, the, the uh, fortitude to stand on these laws when it's not easy, right. when it's not convenient. Right. Right. Those are the people that's going to have the right to the kingdom. You right. it's, not a, it's not a free privilege that anybody could just come in and be like, hey, I, mean, I know I was Israelite, but I was effeminate. No, you're not making it. Right. You're not. You're not. So you got to conform to what the scripture is saying. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.